what's up everybody glad glad that you could make it one second here uh, welcome to another session in cloud computing small talks today we're going to have a look on legal issues on cloud now legal issues are something which if we don't follow or if we, if we violate uh, they're going to cause a lot of issues to the business now at this point of time for us if we know how to deploy an application to the cloud and get it running going to be sufficient but down the line for a longer run obviously having a proper knowledge on the legal issues which could happen on cloud computing environment gonna definitely definitely benefit us and if we don't know what are the legal issues and what challenges we might face then we could land up losing our business or we could land up losing a client so once again, this video is going to be very, very short and sharp. Exactly, we're going to discuss exactly what we wanted to know about these things. And uh, let us get it started. Uh, let's see what are the legal issues and what are the challenges we can face on cloud computing. <clears throat> now to get it started, to talk about the legal issues or the legal obligations on cloud computing, the first thing to be understood, this legal issues does not only apply applicable to the uh, data center owner. It is also applicable to the customer. And this is also applicable to the consumers. Now, the first term is very well understood. The data center owner who owns a data center, they are the data center owner, the customer who going to deploy their applications on the uh, on the data center and the consumers are the people who are gonna leverage or who are gonna access the applications which customers are putting on the data center now to look into the legal issues there are basically five aspects of a legal issue which you need to understand the first one is called the liability The second one is called the law, or sometimes people call it federal laws. Sometimes people call it IT Act. And these are variable. These varies country to country, region to region. The third one is called compatibility. The fourth one is called portability. And the fifth one is called compliances or compatibility. Now, the fifth one, if I talk about the final component, compatible uh, compliances, let's see each of this. How does this make sense to us? Let us start with the first component, which I call liability. Take up a very quick example to elaborate what is a liability and how does that matter? On cloud computing environment, data and applications plays very, very major role. Now, whenever I allow, I as a data center owner, allow my customer to keep their data and the application on the data center, it becomes my responsibility to protect the data and protect the applications. So how do we usually go ahead and do that? Assuming that I do have one database component and on top of the database, I have configured multiple virtual machines, say virtual machine one and virtual machine two. The virtual machine one is running one application A1 and the virtual machine two is also running one application which is called A2. And virtual this application A1 wants to have a data which is D1 and the second application A2 wants to access some data which is called D2. Now, the legal situation is going to be A2 should not get an access of D1. And at the same point of time, A2 also, or rather A1, should not get an access to D2. Now, how do I going to protect this? So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create multiple partitions in my database where I'm going to store two components of that one, the data set one and the data component two in two different partitions. And I have to ensure that 
with the help of the virtual machines, these two partitions are not visible or rather invisible to each other. Now, if I can ensure that component, I'm gonna uh, easily assume that the data violations are not really happening. The second factor, once again, assuming the same scenario where I do have multiple data components stored in different different partitions of the data set or the database, and then for some reason, I lost the D2 data component, which was accessible by my second client through the application A2. Now, at this point of time, I will be losing the complete business as I could not protect my customer data, not in terms of terms of hacking or something, but just in terms of uh, data protection or data availability. So what I'm going to do here, I also going to replicate this data into some other partitions in the same database or in multiple other database partitions. So you through that what I can achieve, I can achieve very higher availability of the data. And if at all I lose any of this component to the other component, I can uh, re restore the data and I can get my application running. So this is my scenario one where I talk about the liability. The similar thing applies for the applications also. It is not only for the data, it is also for the applications. Now moving to the second component. The second component says laws or rules and regulations. Assuming that once again, we're going to take a very quick example here and elaborate what it happens. Assume that I have multiple regions on my global map. So this is the world map. And on this world map, I do have multiple regions. And it is natural to understand that this all regions belong to different, different countries. So if this is going to be India, I assume this is going to be USA. And I assume this also going to be uh, Russia or South Africa or something like that. Now, assume that for this particular region, R1, I have a separate set of rules and regulations where I have my data center. In my second region, R2, I have one customer who wants to access the data from my data center, data or application. And I do have one more customer from one of the another region, R3 where the separate rules and regulations are applicable. Now, the moment customer one wants to access the data from my data center, I have to ensure the rules and regulations from region one and region two are satisfied when these transactions are happening. And at the same point of time, when customer two wants to access the data from my data center, I have to ensure the rules and regulations from the region one and rules and regulations from the region three are also ensured. So this is how we have to comply or protect all the rules and regulations and the laws of any of this environment for any cloud transaction. So this corresponds to the second component of the uh, guidelines. Moving on, on the third, we have got something called copyright for uh, let me go back and ensure that one second, uh, just to correct, make a quick correction. This is called copyright. And this is compliance or compatibility. Bear with me for the quick correction. So the third one going to be the copyright aspect. So let us see how do we ensure the copyright. So there are uh, two clear rules and regulations which for the copyright aspect we have to follow. The number one rule says, the client or the customer cannot have any data on which already there is a copyright by other person. So whatever the data they have to keep, either the copyright should be by them or there should not be any of the copyright. Now, the second rule says that if no copyright on any of the application, then while hosting that data on the client, customer cannot put any password. Strictly, strictly, no passwords. That means if at all some data is available freely on the internet, customer cannot host that data with any of the restriction. That is not allowed. So this two relates to the third point, which we call copyright. 
Moving on to the third, fourth component where we say portability. The portability is once again very, very generic, very, very specific. I have to ensure that uh, the portability is ensured over multiple platform. So if at all, I have one platform as a service where right now I'm allowing the customer data to be hosted. And this platform as a service hosts Java 1.6. And this data is now compatible or uh, compatible with this Java 1.6. Due to some time or some requirement of the customer, if at all I move this one to Java 1.8, or if I upgrade my infrastructure or platform requirements to 1.8, I have to also ensure that the same data is also compatible with other versions of the platform. So that corresponds to our fourth point, what we call portability. Now moving to the very last point, which we called compliances or compatibility. Now this compliances and compatibility is little different than portability as the name suggests. In case of compliances, I have to ensure the device compatibility. Now, just to take in once again an example, I have one virtual machine. On top of that virtual machine, I am hosting one application called AO1. And during my SLA declaration, I made it very clear to my customer saying that any kind of mobility devices should be accessible or should be made possible to access the same application A1. Now, while drafting this particular SLA, maybe I had only iOS and Android available in the market. Down the line, it can also happen that customer come up with their own device to have in the picture or to have it in the same ecosystem. Now it is my responsibility or the data center responsibility to ensure that the newly added device configurations also should be compatible or certain changes to be made to the applications or to the virtual machine configuration so that the newly added devices are also possible to have access on that. So that brings us to the fifth point, what we call compliances or compatibility. And that's pretty much it about the legal issues. So uh, during the SLA formation, we have to ensure that all these processes are very, very clearly mentioned and we don't have any deviation from that. So that's pretty much it, friends, uh, about the legal issues on cloud computing. Uh, hope you liked it, hope you learned it uh, in a very short time. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video, subscribe to the channel Free Faculty, and definitely, definitely have a great, great, great time and have a lot of enjoyment. Hope you are having a good time already. Keep on having a same good time. Thank you very much. Signing off.